Welcome to another edition of Africa Sideways. My name's Big Sig Simpson and we got big things for you today. The new Audi Q8 Coupe, the second most expensive Audi in South Africa. 1.6 million rands of pure luxury motoring heaven. I think the only thing that's more expensive than this in the Audi stable is the R8, which is one hell of a supercar. And this ain't far behind in the speed department. Very, very comfortable air suspension. Feels like you, you're driving on, on a magic carpet, to be honest. This has got the three liter turbocharged engine pushing up 250 kilowatts of power. Every gizmo you could imagine on this car. This has basically got all the bells and whistles you could ever want in a car. Some people say this is more intelligent than, than the Range Rovers of a similar price range very adaptive a, a good example of it is 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 the is the air condition in the back you just have to put your hand hand next to it and it and it turns on it's almost like mimicking a little child putting their hand there to see if it's if it's on or not very very impressive indeed performance on this car is exceptional handling is all there brakes are obviously very good I'm struggling to find anything wrong with this car you give it a bit of mamba it shoots out of there like a honeymoon is it really is a big vehicle massive leg room here but this is going to be a limousine for some some people so the back of the car is very important lots of air conditioning back here a lot of technology going on here you can see the one problem with all these touch screens is you get these these marks on the screen so if you got one of these keep it all show me in the car just to keep your screens clean but it really has all the latest technology money can buy automatic boot holder you just press this button twice and up she comes cavernous boot space here. Yeah, I think you could fit four golf bags in here if they're not too big. Loads of room, dedicated five seats. If you want the seven seats, you're gonna have to go for the Q7. This particular model is 1.6 million with all the extras thrown in. One hell of a piece. turning circle it beeps a bit but not doesn't beep as much as, as the Mercedes which I like it's not such a control freak car sometimes I find with the Mercs they'll just break out of nowhere if they see a cyclist or something but this car holds its nerve which is quite a nice touch big head turner this turns as many heads as a Mustang people know it's something special people know they need to look car if you want to be seen you want to show that you've made it in the business world you buy one of these if you want to get your wife something this she's gonna look good dropping the kids off at school it's gonna be safe and see the sunroof doesn't make too much noise we're at 60 k's now you get a bit of a you get a bit of noise so it's ready for slow cruising the sunroof You get about 11 liters per 100 k's for this car so the fuel economy is not class leading but it's good enough very polite warning signal to tell you to put your seat belt on which is a nice touch take that off cruises like a rolls royce to be honest around the city pleasure to drive
you cute, eh, hey, buddy? You've, oh, you've, been, you've been playing camera car, yeah? Oh, it's a bit like a Boeing. It's amazing. The quality is absolutely outstanding. Being inside that car is, I don't know, for real first class job. First, our first class is probably. This is the closest you're going to get to a first class cabin of, of an airplane. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's uh, it's got a bit of everything in there. Hats off to you, Audi. It's nice to see. It's nice to see some of these lavish, over-the-top cars are still there. It's not all about sensible being down to this. This <laughs> is this is the hoi for lawyer. This is something to aspire to. Leg room for days. I mean, you could fit the queen. In there, no problem. I think the queen will be happy in the back of this car. Yeah, it's, uh, and if she's happy in there. <laughs> <laughs> you get some more of a family in there too. Huh? Yeah, exactly. And you, I mean, what a place to have a few TNTs. I mean, it really has a bit of everything, this car. Out of 10, how much would you give it? Oh, uh, it's got to be like at least a, a 9 or 8 out of 8, 9 out of 10. It's an amazing car. I don't know how you top it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Performance, it's all there. Like it drives like a sports car, but it's it's got all the all the requirements for pace. And you can see, and you can see, um, <laughs> you can see we've got it on off-road mode. So you see how much clearance, extra clearance it gives. That's 250 miles. So put some, put a put a 19-inch rim there with a, with a high-profile tire, and you're in business. Yeah, I don't know if I want to take it out in. in too rough, but uh, certainly maybe, you can get I through it if you want you to. Go up and down. Okay, so let's take it down and down. Oh, there we go. He jumped up a bit, eh? Oh, there we go. There she goes. That's dynamics through your race mode. Back up to off road. Up she comes again. There we go, look at that I mean, lift, that is eh? decent clearance. Yeah. What are you there, bash plates? I mean, a bash plate, soon off ground, you're putting 1.6 million down, and you got enough for a bash plate. <laughs> bash plate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy come, peasy. Oh, brilliant. 22 inch rims, what, what do you think the, the smallest rim you could fit on here is? Because you see there's quite a bit of space there with the brake yeah. calipers. Yeah. Could you, 18 you could go and down push. at least 2 inches, eh? So the diesel comes with a 19. You could probably get away with a 285 by 60 on a 19 inch room, which would give you a decent size profile. Yeah. These brakes are phenomenal. The whole car is phenomenal. We've got the Porsche reading here, hey? Yeah, well, a Porsche, Porsche is owned by a VW who owns Audi, so a lot of the technology is shared. It's on the same platform as the Cayenne. I believe. Oh wow. Okay, so you slightly a different brand. I guess you're paying a little bit less than you would yeah, for the Cayenne. But exactly. Now let's, let's not call this car cheap. It's not no, a value not, car. I doubt that the Cayenne's <laughs> going to be much more expensive than this. Yeah. <laughs> I give it 9.5 out of 10. The, the only half is because I can't afford it. She's giving it 9 out of 10. Can't fault it. Go get one. The new Q8. Catch you next time for the big road trip. Good people of Isuzu are hooking me up and we're heading to the Drakensberg. Catch you next time on Africa Sideways. Bang. Handling is majestic on this car. Very intelligent lighting. Gives you a full beam of the road. It really does feel like a 1.6 million rand car to be honest. It does, it is different. You are getting something special. Often I wonder how, do you, how, how can they keep on raising the bar, but the bar can always be raised. Great acceleration on this thing. Doing 130, a little bit of wind noise. Nothing to sensational extremely smooth with the air suspension just soaks up any bumps even with 22 inch rims with a 40 profile it still sits as smooth as any car I've driven this is really a town a town car to look off show good look good and show off I mean 
and you certainly do that, turns bucket loads of heads all day long. And why wouldn't it? It's got 200,000 rands worth of extras. The rims alone are 40,000. But who cares? If you've got 1.6 million, you don't care about the height of depreciation. You care about looking good and letting people know that you've got a bit of time. And a little bit more wind noise than I would have thought. Granted, it is a very windy day outside, but a little bit surprised about that. The interior lighting is fantastic, really soft, GPS, gives you a nice night glow there, seat warmers, aircraft style switches, a thing of beauty. I'd easily say it's the best car I've ever driven. And I've driven a lot of expensive cars. This, this, this has a great combination of looks, performance, it's, and it doesn't nanny you, it doesn't beep all the time. I find some of the other German cars that beep, but it, they beep way too much. And it, and it actually distracts you from, from, the, from the important job of driving. This car just lets you get on with the job at hand. Performance wise, it feels the same as a GTI. A lot of power on tap, 250 kilowatts, over 300 horsepower. This is the real deal. They're going with a 3 liter V6 on here with massive turbo. I do kind of miss the 4.2 V8. Some people say that was the best engine Audi ever made. It was that 4.2 V8 that first came out in the A8 about 16, 17 years ago. That was a thing of beauty. You really can't fault this car, all ends up 1.6, I don't think that's a rip off, it's just good motoring, the new Q8, go get one, catch you next time on Africa Sideways. Only on Africa Sideways.